Okay, we're going to do uh, another video on bullet casting alloys for black powder uh, cartridge guns. And it's a little bit different because basically, like I said, there's three different types of alloys. You know, pure soft lead you use for a uh, black powder muzzle loader or a replica gun, whether it be a Kentucky rifle or a Civil War gun. You use a little bit harder alloy, blended, for a more modern handgun, and generally the biggest application is pistols, um, though a lot of us that shoot old military rifles know that we can't get the bullets of certain diameters, aren't made anymore, and our guns will shoot better with uh, cast bullets, and we use a little bit harder alloy with us, you know, because those can be loaded with smokeless powder. Um, black powder cartridge guns, I'm going to get into this in detail, but the big deal with that is some people believe you shouldn't shoot anything but black powder like the gun was originally designed for. And every time I've done both, I've done black powder and smokeless powder loads in the uh, Mauser 7184, I believe, yeah, uh, rifle. And I get all kinds of comments, well, you, sh you shouldn't use smokeless powder, you should only use black powder, and, you know, that's again a choice, there's pros and cons to both of them, but basically, if you go to the purest using black powder, you're going to want an alloy of just plain lead and tin, in a percentage, and you will get the percentages of what is called 20 uh, 21, 31, 41, 16, 1. And what it is, it's basically two things. It's pure lead, 99.99 lead with uh, pure tin. And the 21, it'd be like 20-1. What it means is 20 pounds pure lead, 1 pound of tin. That is hardened. And you can go 30, 40, uh, 40 pounds of soft lead with one pound of tin mixed in. And I was just reviewing something today where some guy said the very last, before they changed the cartridges, the very last alloy they used was 16-1, which would be 16 pounds of pure lead and one pound of tin. So this is kind of exhausting, but I'm doing some research on it, trying to get to the bottom of it. Here I have, this is a, a 43 Verndal cartridge. It was in a Verndal rifle in the uh, 1888, I think, uh, Manlicker. And most of these old cartridges, and I tore this one apart. I, I got a video where I took one of these apart. It's a pure soft lead paper patch bullet covered with a... Um, like a lubricant, like on a 22, and then there is a lubricant cookie underneath this, a wax, little wax disc, and it's compressed black powder charge uh, inside it. And what I mean by compressed, I'll go over that when I get into loading black powder cartridges. Um, the black powder is compressed down in there, it's solid, almost like a solid mass inside there. And we'll get into more of that when we go into black powder cartridge reloading. Now here I have another couple bullets, examples here. One saw for 4570, came out of a Lee mold, 400 grain bullet. And another one is for the uh, 43 Spanish out of the Lyman mold. I cast these out of wheel weights. Now I did that with the intent of uh, firing a wheel weight bullet with a smokeless uh, powder charge. And the thing is, what happens is, is like this bullet, if you check the groove diameter on the rifles, this bullet's like 10 thousandths undersized. You know, and I'm wondering how does it work. Well, with black powder, it, it's different, it has a different reaction than smokeless powder does in a cartridge. They used undersized bullets because the lead was softer. 
And then when the black powder goes off, it has a different reaction in smokeless powder. It's, it's like a mechanic, they call it a mechanical force. More or less hits the base of the bullet, which the bullet's a softer lead, which pushes it like the old musket, you know, the old mini balls, which will hit the base of the bullet and make it bigger, actually kind of thump the bullet or squeeze it to where uh, it'll engage the rifling all the way, even though it's undersized. The harder your alloy, the less play you have. So actually, if you load these with smokeless ammo or smokeless powder in a black powder gun, you could seriously lead the barrel up. Unless the bullet is already a thousandths to two thousandths in diameter, uh, bigger than the uh, groove diameter. The only problem with that is now you've got an out of spec bullet, you've got to stretch out the case, the case may not chamber, uh, you run into other problems. So, the limited amount of work I've done, I'm going to go back to where I'm not going to use these uh, wheel weight bullets with a smokeless load. I'm going to go just specifically to the black powder right for now and get um, the lead alloy. Now I blended some, actually be 19 one, 19 pounds of supposed pure lead with um, a pound of tin. And I made up some of this, so that's pretty close to 20, 20 to 1 is what they recommend and what I guess the government used at one time. And I've read some books, we're going to do a book review and go over that. So I've kind of shifted gears in, in the black powder cartridge stuff. So I'm going to cast some of a softer lead alloy and try to use the designs, uh, especially like in the 43 Spanish, you can't get a larger bullet uh, diameter. It's undersized. You have to use a soft lead. And we'll try to do an experiment and see how it works with the black powder and also maybe a smokeless load with the soft lead. Um, same with the 4570. Um, I'll go over that specifically. I've been doing some work with the 4570. And uh, the one thing you don't want to do, if you let up a barrel like a pistol barrel, and I'm going to do a video on a Lewis lead remover, it's pretty easy to kind of correct that problem in a handgun. On an old rifle, um, if you lead the barrel up, you have a totally different problem and a huge crisis. This gun here, I don't know what it, this 4570 has some problems. What these will do is uh, down by the chamber area, right in front of the chamber and the chamber itself. I don't know if somebody was shooting undersized uh, hard cast bullets and leaded the barrel up terribly, but I have a problem with this where uh, if I run a slug through here, it gets hung up right in this general area and the lead comes out all toward the crap. Uh, it could be pitting, it could be a combination of pitting and leading. Because somebody did shoot this gun and it was kind of dirty when I cleaned it out. Um, so, we're going to kind of stay away from the smokeless loads for now and kind of try to get into a black powder cartridge load with soft lead. And I'm going to work on that, casting bullets and everything else. Uh, now I'm going to do a separate video on leading itself.